Hey fellow Force users, what is up? It's Jasmine, the Ahsoka Tano fan, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it is time for another episode of The Bad Batch. Um, so last week's was a, a fun episode. It was kind of another side one, um, but nonetheless, we got to see a lot. We got to see uh, Moochie, the Rancor, who has obviously been the uh, focus of a lot of discussions going around, whether or not she's the same Rancor that Luke killed in Return of the Jedi at Jabba's palace. Um, apparently, she is not because Jabba's Rancor is supposed to be a male Rancor by the name of Batissa. And so, um, but a lot of people thought that that was supposed to be the case, which actually would have made sense to the story. And it also would have been a lot more heartbreaking, you know, to see Luke kill um, the Rancor in Return of the Jedi. But nonetheless, it seems like Moochie is not the same one. So who knows what that means? Maybe that's just kind of giving us an early look at Jabba when he first started acquiring uh, the Rancors. So um, yeah, but non nonetheless, it was cool to see. We got to see Bib Fortuna at the end, obviously. And and we know that we see him in The Mandalorian. He ends up, spoiler alert, but being killed by Boba and Fennec at the end there. It definitely raised a lot of questions because now we have Bib Fortuna and Fennec Shand who were both in The Mandalorian. So are we going to see Boba make an appearance? It would be cool to definitely see Boba and Fennec meet because we know that in The Mandalorian they end up being very close obviously he ends up saving her and so it'd be cool if we got to see their relationship early on and how it started and how they got to where they end up in the Mandalorian. It was overall a fun episode and I like the fact that we got to see the Zygerians again. Actually apparently it's Zygerians. I think it might be Zygerians. I'm gonna double check the pronunciation on that. But it definitely um, gave me huge Clone Wars vibes from the Slaves of the Republic arc from season four, which is honestly one of the most well done arcs, I think. So I love that they are kind of giving us uh, Clone Wars throwbacks here and there. It kind of feels like, you know, a walk down memory lane. First we got to see Kamino, and then we got to see Seleucami, we got to see Pantora, uh, you know, and then we're seeing the Zygerians. So I wonder if we'll see any more uh, Clone Wars Easter eggs in this episode. Anyways, guys, I don't want to speculate uh, too much. Let's dive right in and see what happens. We got to find out where the Bad Batch go next. And of course, what is happening with my man Wrecker. We know something's going to happen there and it's probably not going to be good. Without further ado, let's get this video rolling and let's see what's in store for us. I'm not gonna lie, I'm coming off a week of overnight shifts and I actually just got back from my last overnight shift of the week, so I haven't slept yet. <laughs> if I look a little tired, that's why. <laughs> Decommissioned, interesting. Whoa, the animation looks so nice there. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Omega's so cute. Oh, she's practicing with her bow, Ah, This is so cute, oh my goodness. This is that Sid's place, right? It looks like it. Oh, bless her heart, three out of 12 times, Oh, Aw, it does not look easy to shoot. Oh. <laughs> Sid's kicking them out. <laughs> decommissioning. That's why it's called decommissioned. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't think you guys have much of a choice. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Whoa, she's a natural. Don't be discouraged, Omega. You'll get the hang of it. Mm. Nice. What is Sid up to? Why is she having them go on all these missions? Corellia, have we been to this planet before, guys, in the Clone Wars? Or Rebels? There's a lot that Sid doesn't mention. <laughs> <laughs> Omega looks so cute with her little crossbow. Is Wrecker afraid of heights? 
Oh, yeah, he is. From Remember from the Bad Batch arc, one of the episodes on the Clone Wars? I think he mentioned that he didn't like heights. Wow, so we're getting to see what happened to the droids. That's so cool, guys. We've never seen this before. We just see clones and then all of a sudden, stormtroopers. There's a big gap um, of the story that's being filled in by this series. <laughs> She's still grounded, eh? I honestly think getting rid of the droids was a mistake. But I guess that technically they were decommissioned after Grievous died, right? It was killed by Obi-Wan? Mm. Oh, is there a worker behind Omega? Right there. Right? Wait, um... Is that Rafa? And Trace, they're both back? Whoa, I did not expect to see them again after the Clone Wars. Whoa. So I'm guessing they're gonna team up now. Wow. So who hired them then? Was it, would Sid have hired both of them at the same time? Oh. Uh, that's true. That was Rafa's fuck up. I know, Rafa, come on. <laughs> there she goes, taking off again. She did that uh, to Ahsoka too. She kept trying to convince Trace to leave her behind. I'm in pursuit, she's so cute. Their missions never go smoothly, man. Oh. Hunter. Is that thing going to start moving? If so, this is giving me major Attack of the Clones vibes. When Padme um, was in the factory. How? Oh, he's going to try and Tarzan it, man? If he falls, he's toast, man. Oh my gosh. Whoa. He hit his head. Again! Holy! How many times can someone hit their head? Oh, she's stuck. Man. <gasps> Is something gonna happen right now? Oh, shit! <gasps> Good soldiers follow orders. Wait, he just got shot. He's okay though, right? Like it hit his armor. That's not your business, clone. <laughs> Rafa, man. I always found her funny. I actually like her. Wrecker. What is going on? Poor Omega. Are you that cold? You're just gonna leave her? Whoa. Dad hunter to the rescue. I was gonna say, I love how he says, follow me, like he expects Rafa to listen. Rafa doesn't listen to nobody. Wait, how did the hell? <laughs> Whoa, it's cutting it too close. What? Isn't she like burning right now? Oh my gosh. Omega. Oh, oh my gosh. This is too close for comfort. Whoa. Jeez. Okay, now check on Wrecker, please. Someone check on Wrecker. <laughs> Yo. But he's, he's not, he's not around any Jedi, but still, like, part of Order 66 means you execute clones who don't, um, execute it, right? So he, that would include the Bad Batch, so he'll probably still turn against them. 
<laughs> that was nice. Nice touch. Oh, smart. Right. That's the command droid. Isn't the one worried about Wrecker? Oh, shit. He's turned. He's turned, hasn't he? If he says that line again. Oh, he came back to us. So I, I guess that wasn't the real turn then. It'll be later. And does he even remember that that happened? Like, will he tell the rest of the Bad Batch what happened? Or maybe he just forgot. <laughs> of course, Rafa likes Wrecker. That's a pretty good plan, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. Did we win? Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. I know. We did see that once though, right? In, um, what was that episode of the Clone Wars? Season one, Blue Shadow Virus, I think. Come on, Omega, it's your time to shine. Look at you go. Okay, the real question though, who gets the droid? It's too bad they couldn't take some of those droids with them. Oh, she's talking about Ahsoka? The Jedi? Hello. Hi. Bye, Omega. I love the way she says bye, it's so cute. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you giving this to us? The right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Very true. Who is Sid's buyer though? I'd like to know that. Don't tell me it's over. Already? No. Okay, Leia. Still a little bit of time left. Patch him through. Who's him? Bail Organa? It's a good guy, right? Yeah. I think. Oh my gosh. All these mystery contacts. Who hired Fennec? Who is Sid's buyer? Who was Rafa talking to? Hmm. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that was kind of fun. Um, it was cool to see the battle droids again. Um, obviously we haven't seen them since, uh, the Clone Wars. They've since been decommissioned, hence the title of the, um, episode. And obviously because the Separatists are no longer a thing and the Empire is using the clones and soon to decommission the clones to use the recruits or stormtroopers. So that was cool to, to see them fighting uh, on the good side for once. Um, although we did see that, as I mentioned in the Clone Wars, it was the Blue Shadow Virus episode um, where that kid, he was using them um, to basically like suit his needs around the planet. They were kind of like his workers. I was definitely getting major Attack of the Clones vibes from that whole scene with Omega getting stuck there and having to be rescued, kind of like how Padme had to be rescued. So that was cool. I did not expect to see Trace and Rafa in this episode or just ever again. I, I kind of just thought that, you know, they were new characters introduced mainly to kind of open up Ahsoka's perspective a little bit more to people living um, in the underworld, allowing her to see the struggles that people face that weren't really, that were kind of caught in the middle of the war, so to speak. So the fact that we got to see them again this episode shows how connected the story is. Every story is told and every character is shown for a reason and it's all, um, it's all related, right? And um, it actually looks like from the end that Rafa and Trace might play a, a bigger role even going forward because they're looking, you know, they're talking to that mystery contact. So, and who knows like, who it could be. I shouted out Bail Organa, that's like my first thought. Um, but yeah, you never know. Another possibility could be one of the Mandalorians, maybe Bo-Katan, because we do know that Bo-Katan briefly met Trace and Rafa at the end of the Ahsoka Wakaba arc, so it's possible that they are now in contact with one another, and that would be a nice tie-in potentially to the Mandalorian as well. As we know, this show is definitely making multiple tie-ins to the Mandalorian. It could be Obi-Wan as well, maybe, or it could be Ahsoka, potentially. 
if Ahsoka kept in contact with them. We still don't know exactly when the Bad Batch takes place with respect to the Ahsoka novel. If it's before the Ahsoka novel, then that could be Ahsoka, because um, Rafa and Trace aren't mentioned in the novel, obviously, but uh, that would be pretty cool. We did also see them with an R7 droid. Uh, now, I don't know if that's just one of the R7 droids or if that's Ahsoka's specific R7 droid. And if so, um, does that mean that Ahsoka met up with them again after the Clone Wars ended? Or did the writers just do that to kind of give a nod to Ahsoka and potentially hint at her making an appearance in the Bad Batch eventually. It is definitely possible that she did maybe even give them her droid because we know that at the end of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka's R7 droid got basically shot up by the clones along with other droids, but you can kind of see at the end there with her and Rex, um, it did look like they had gathered R7's pieces and um, they were carrying it with them on the shuttle. So. We never really saw what happened after that, but we were led to assume that maybe they were gonna rebuild the droid. Uh, those are my thoughts. You guys can let me know what you think down below. We got to see Omega obviously getting better with her blaster and Sid was teaching her there, which is pretty cool. Notice how Omega kind of struggled with the bow at first when she was in Sid's cantina practicing, but then the moment she was actually on the battlefield, against the droids she got it perfectly when she shot that blaster for the first time it was on the battlefield against crosshair and she did it perfectly and we're seeing the same thing again with the bow and arrow and her being trained a little bit by sid just shows that sid although she's kind of sketchy she does seem to be of uh, use and of a benefit to the bad batch um, but at the same time she also can't fully be trusted she knows how valuable they are and could out them at any time to many different uh, people that would be interested in the Bad Batch, but she chooses not to so long as they work for her. So they're definitely kind of in a pickle, the Bad Batch with Sid, but for now she seems to be somewhat of an ally to them. And I think that was shown with her helping out and interacting with Omega as well. Omega definitely um, seems to be growing a little bit more every episode and she's kind of acquiring one skill uh, at a time. You know, she learned how to track the, the moon dragon like Hunter did and uh, she picked up the blaster for the first time in the premiere and shot it no problem. Um, and now we see her with the bow and arrow. So we're definitely seeing different sides of her. And someone pointed out in my comments as well that she seems to have a connection to different animals too, which we got to see last episode with the Rancor and, um, or different creatures I should say, and the Moon Dragon. Um, and also in the episode with Fennec Shan, she had a little connection there to a couple of the creatures. And so it's possible that could be building up to something big for Omega and um, could allude to what her enhanced skill exactly is. I love seeing the Bad Batch work together with Trace and Rafa because they're essentially all in the same boat. You know, it's it's so interesting what the war has done uh, to people kind of in the middle now, right? And Hunter says a line that it, it was almost simpler when they were just soldiers because they were on a specific side, had to follow orders and that's it. Now things are a lot more gray. Who knew that former clowns that were serving the Republic would now kind of be doing these these underground side missions and side deals alongside people like Trace and Rafa, right? Times change and you have to adapt. It's like what Saul Guerrero said. You can either change and adapt to survive or you know die with the past. And so now they're kind of finding themselves in the same uh, gray area as people such as Trace and Rafa um, doing the same sorts of missions. So it was just cool to kind of see them all working together there, people from different backgrounds for um, the same common goal. And you see a little similarities too with uh, Trace and her smarts to use the command droid um, in order to control the other droids. You know, she was kind of um, on the same line of thinking as Tech and Rafa. She kind of was a little bit more rebellious, um, you know, and maybe reckless sometimes. We saw that in the Clone Wars when she got Ahsoka and, and Trace involved with the Pikes and whatnot. And so it makes sense that she would like Wrecker the most. Wrecker's kind of a little bit like how she is. Rafa was kind of both similar to how she was in the Clone Wars, but also different. She was similar in the sense that you could kind of see her somewhat selfish tendencies still. Um, there was that moment where 
she, you know, after Omega almost died, um, she was like, oh, I'm fine, thanks for asking. A typical thing that Rafa would do. She's also constantly, you know, debating about who gets the droid at the end. Meanwhile, Hunter and the Bad Batch were focused on working together to get out of the situation, right? So you can tell Rafa definitely still has her selfish tendencies. But at the same time, she's different because you can tell she's picked a side now, as she said at the end of the episode. The whole time we saw her in the Clone Wars, while the Republic was in power, she hadn't picked a side. She was just looking out for her and her sister and kind of making whatever underground deal she could in order to make enough money to survive. So she was kind of in the middle, in the gray area. So isn't it ironic that the people she didn't really like, the Jedi and the Republic, while they were in power, she could afford to kind of stay in the middle. But now that the Empire is in power, she's been forced to take a side which is against the Empire. And that kind of shows us who the real bad guy is in this, which is obviously supposed to be the Empire. It's funny how she tells the Bad Batch, oh, you were getting ready to acquire this dangerous intel, but you didn't know who you were giving it to. But yet she had no problem um, selling the spice to the Pikes not fully knowing what they intended to do with it. And Ahsoka was the one who tried to warn them that they're not gonna use it for good, right? And that didn't bother Rafa at all. She was only concerned about the money. So she definitely seems changed in that regard in the sense that she's now kind of more concerned. She wants to now make sure it's going into good hands. Trey seems to have grown as well because she seems to hold her own a lot in this episode. She's not necessarily relying on anybody to, to save her. In fact, she actually saves Omega. And so the fact that they are now fighting for good uh, just shows how much they've grown, the sisters, and redeemed themselves. And I think Ahsoka honestly brought that out in them. And of course, Wrecker in this episode, we saw what we knew was coming, guys. His chip starting to act up. But I liked how he didn't go full-blown, you know, dark side this episode. It's definitely hinting at the fact that he might just kind of have a couple moments where his chip acts up uh, before he fully turns, right? Um, but there definitely was something going on there. I wonder if he remembers or will remember any of it or if it's just kind of something he'll forget. Someone pointed out in my, comment, my comments as well that Omega should be able to pick up on something, which is so true because she did say to Crosshair at the beginning of the series, I know what you're gonna do, um, please don't, right? And we still don't know exactly what she meant by that. I don't know if she meant um, something in the immediate near future or something um, in the far future that we haven't seen yet in terms of what Crosshair is gonna do. But she seemed to kind of sense something was up and so it's only a matter of time before she senses the same thing with Wrecker. Tech, you need to hurry up with your device that you were working on there and you guys need to hurry up and meet Rex so he can help you remove your chips, which is bound to happen. And obviously we need to see Ahsoka too. If we're seeing all these people, Trace and Rafa, and we're gonna see Rex, we saw him in the trailer, um, there's no reason why we shouldn't see Ahsoka as well. I'll probably give this episode about a seven out of 10. A fun episode. You know, I love the fact that the title was called Decommissioned. Everybody in this episode was decommissioned, so to speak. You know, the Bad Batch, they're like decommissioned clones on the run. Trace and Rafa, they're kind of also technically decommissioned, caught in the middle of this war, um, not serving the Empire, right? And um, the droids obviously decommissioned. It's just so cool to see the Bad Batch and Trace and Rafa use the droids to their advantage in this case. Um, the droids have really come to the rescue a lot of the times. We saw that uh, a couple episodes back with Fennec Shand as well. You guys let me know what you thought of the episode down below. Um, leave a comment and keep the discussion going. I've been a little bit slower responding to some of them this past week just because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I am coming off a week of overnight shifts, so my schedule's been all over the place, so I haven't gotten to all of them, but rest assured, I will uh, look at them and uh, respond to as many as I can. I appreciate each and every single comment. Um, I love hearing from you guys and I love hearing your thoughts. And as always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and share the video as well. And I will see you next week for the next episode of The Bad Batch. Take care, guys.